Hi, my name is Javier Velasquez and I am a gamification and game designer and I'm going to do these short videos around game design for gamification designers. Uh, the purpose of these videos is to create awareness around some topics that might actually help improve uh, some of your designs. Uh, this first video, will, I will talk about game mechanics, uh, which is a really controversial topic. Uh, it's something that I usually try to criticize a lot in terms of how it is used in, in gamification uh, circles. So I wanted to make some clarifications that might actually help us uh, create better gamification designs. So first, in terms of game mechanics, I will try to illustrate this by creating a simple and not so real game. Uh, in this game, uh, we will have some moves. Uh, for example, we have these tokens and each player, each one of these players will have turns placing their, um, let's call them placement tokens uh, in this hexagon, in these vertices, in these vertices. So uh, whenever I place a token, what will happen is uh, in a resolution phase, I will be able to, for example, place uh, one of my meeples, these in board games are called meeples, if you are not a board game player, uh, one of my meeples in each of the vertices where I placed uh, my placement uh, token. Now, let's go for a second round. In this second round, I will do an reaction. For example, let's say I can put my, oh, sorry, I, I can put my uh, placement token over uh, another player's uh, meeple. So, for example, let's say this player did this and this player, play, the orange player, uh, play this uh, over the blue meeple and now let's say so in this case blue is attacking green so this is an attack and I have a 12 sided die so I will roll the die and if I get a certain number for example eight or more I will be able to capture that uh, spot and deliver this uh, meeple back to its uh, supply for example right so in this case green just places a new meeple in this new uh, uh, vertice and uh, then orange will attack as well and it was a miss so the meeple um, you leave the meeple there so now let's add another rule if you have two meeples that are adjacent to each other you will score one point and we'll use these doubloons uh, as a way to show that i've scored a point right so the game will continue in this way so for example i will try to play this one because if i have three tokens uh, at the same time i will be able to do other stuff so let's say for example that this happened right so i place my blue token here then it's uh, green storm so the green token here he's trying to score some points and orange is trying to capture this spot to make a combo in the future i don't know something like that and he attacks and it's a hit something like this right so now i can say something like this here uh, blue will score two points and let's say um, I don't know orange will score one point because because it's not only adjacent but you can jump one vertice something that I, ha that I have just made up for the sake of this explanation uh, in this case uh, if you make a three uh, line a, th a, a line of three meeples you get the octopus and this octopus doesn't have anything to do with the game it doesn't have a mechanic it's just an acknowledgement that you were the first player to manage to achieve this in the game right so what will happen here is the following um, we have in this sense in this small game and i'm not saying who wins the game maybe the one that has the most points at the end in these games what we have is the following we have a pointing system right so we have here a score we actually have badges because this octopus will work as a badge. It doesn't have any use, useful information. It doesn't have useful uh, information in terms of, in terms of game mechanics. Uh, it's just an acknowledgement of something you achieved in the game. That's why they also are called achievements in some platforms. And uh, we have actually a leaderboard. Uh, I prefer to call this a position table, a leaderboards and position tables. I, 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 I make a distinction that I will talk about later. But here we have the scores of our three players and we know who is leading uh, in the first position and who is in the second position and who is in the third position. So we have a PBL, PBLs. We have points, badges and leaderboards. But take that in mind, the points are not a game mechanic points are not game mechanics the badges are not game mechanics and the leaderboard is not a game mechanic itself these are not game mechanics the game mechanics were the things i explained the processes the functions that created this mechanism this system that allow me to acquire the points and actually go towards a goal so what do you have in terms of game mechanics 
first, you will need a trigger, something that will start a process. These triggers are usually behaviors, and that's why uh, you talk about game mechanics to create behaviors and you might start thinking about all the psychology you have read around gamification design. So these triggers might be behaviors, they're not always behaviors, they can be also game events, but let's start here. So we have these triggers uh, that can be behaviors. These behaviors will start a process and this process will take into account several parameters. And this is complex. Uh, if you are a uh, software development, it will be, this is a function. Uh, so you have some parameters, something like what happened, where are the pieces, every input that will affect this process. And this process will have an outcome. And this outcome can be scoring, but it can be scoring, but it also might not be scoring at all. So many of these actions will allow me to take one piece out of the, of the board and place another piece, but they, that will be the outcome. It doesn't mean there is actually a feedback or a scoring system necessarily built into the game mechanic, but it has an outcome. And these game mechanics will make something really interesting and really important in terms of game design, because this, everything that I'm writing here, will create something that's really important. And I will talk more about this later, but that's called the game status. You will change through your game mechanics, the game status will create positional advantages and will create different interesting things that might drive behaviors into your game design. So game mechanics are actually an integral part towards game, good gamification design. You need to, to create good game mechanics to actually keep people engaged because that's what creates the problem in the game. You create problems by creating all these factors, all these different game actions, these moves, these game moves that will trigger eventually maybe a scoring mechanism, maybe not. There are games that actually don't create that kind of a scoring mechanisms, but you can have points, badges, leaderboards, everything you want, but they must be uh, designed in function of what the processes are and what that means in terms of the objective of the game. There, they, you cannot just place points for making behaviors. You, you don't just jump from the behavior to the outcome. And this is the first lesson I want to uh, share with you. Uh, points, badges, leaderboards uh, are not game mechanics. They're part of game mechanics and can be used uh, to create different game mechanics and game rules. Uh, game mechanics are actually built by creating limitations, sorry, limitations and constraints, of course, and by creating rules, algorithms. That's what creating game mechanics is about. So here it is. That's uh, my first video. I hope uh, you find this interesting enough so I can make more of these small videos. I will try to keep them small. Uh, so they will be gamification bytes. These are all based on my knowledge of game design. And of course, it's uh, not necessarily uh, the most sophisticated game design there is, but I hope th this will help you understand the place of uh, PBLs, for example, or game mechanics in terms of your gamification design. It's not about the points. It's about understanding how these triggers affect a game status and that game status affect game choices. And when you affect game choices and decision making, you're starting to work towards behaviors. And that's the road we're trying to uh, go towards in this, uh, in this series of videos, I hope. Uh, let me know if you like them and let me know if you want me to make more of these videos. And again, welcome to the, uh, my, my board and I hope you want to see more. Thank you and bye.